Hello everyone, my name is Jake Drew and I will be presenting today on the C-Sharp Producer Consumer Pipeline or basically parallel programming options which are available to you in C-Sharp for multi-core programming. First of all, let's go over some of the uh, different pros and cons for parallel programming in C-Sharp. On the pros side, uh, C-Sharp offers a very rapid development environment um, for parallel programming. What I mean by that is uh, it, it has a whole lot of thread safe data structures and different parallel um, building blocks or objects that are available um, to uh, quickly support building some of your more massive uh, parallel pipelines and MapReduce processes. And in addition to that, most of these features are included right out of the box with the .NET framework. I would also say that if you build a very successful process, uh, it's fairly easy to go ahead and port um, that process over to Linux using Mono, so you're not just locked in to the Windows API. Um, some of the cons are that you know without without assistance from uh, some of the lower level alternative libraries, um, you're not really going to do much um, low level asymmetric multiprocessing or bare metal programming in C sharp. Um, also, if you're going to use C sharp, you know it does require Visual Studio. Um, in the, the .NET framework. Uh, and, you know, it could possibly be a little slower than some of your other lower level, lower level languages and packages, uh, you know, such as C-sharp using Silk++ or some, something of that regard. So let's talk about some of the C-sharp threading basics. One of the first questions that comes up a lot since C-sharp is so similar to Java is, does C-sharp have Java synchronized keyword? And the answer is technically yes, but um, using it is not the preferred or best practice since all locking in C-sharp is done on the, um, quote, this object. Well, the lock statement provides a, um, a great alternative to using the synchronized keyword. Uh, and in C-sharp is typically used to protect critical section code that's accessed during parallel program execution. Um, however, having said this, the lock statement is also pretty slow and there are a lot of other faster alternatives out there um, that when used with caution can uh, you know achieve much better results. A great example of this is using the interlock class. What interlock provides is a method to update a shared variable in one atomic operation. Um, so instead of using the lock statement, you uh, in cases where you're just simply you know incrementing a counter or maybe exchanging a variable or adding two uh, values together, you can do that um, using the the interlock uh, increment decrement add and exchange methods. C# -sharp also offers a spin lock statement. Um, the spin lock instruction instruction enters and exits faster than the, the lock instruction does. However, um, it never actually releases a CPU during its locking, so um, this is really only good for very low-level locking scenarios where maybe you're only locking on like one statement, a repeated update that's occurring over and over and over again. Um, there's definitely a performance trade-off that has to be considered um, between the, the benefit and speed you get versus the amount of CPU that the spin lock actually uses. So there are several different ways that you can run your uh, programs or code asynchronously uh, and th this sometimes becomes very important in a, in a parallel pipeline type of process where you want to have a pr producer um, generating items and a consumer consuming those items and both of those pieces of code are separate but yet need to run at the same time. Uh, one easy way to uh, execute code asynchronously is to just use the thread pull user, queue user work item method. However, uh, it's important to note that that code Running code asynchronously in that method doesn't always mean that that code is going to run instantly. If you need the code to run instantly, uh, you always have to create a thread object and in, 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 uh, run the code asynchronously in that manner. However, there's also a way to achieve a synchronous-like behavior by simply using what is called the yield return command. Um, what the yield return command does is, it, is during, during a for loop execution, say you can actually halt processing and pass each data value back to the calling process um, as soon as it's generated. And this is this are really nice for situations where, say, if you're generating a rather long list and the process is canceled, um, the remaining records in that list would never get produced since yield return is passing them back one at a time. Um, a, another benefit there is that 
in the prior scenario, you would actually have to wait for the very, very long list to be in generated, generated in its entirety before it was returned back to the user, uh, which is definitely not the case in yield return. The parallel library in C-sharp offers both parallel 4 and parallel 4 each. Um, this is very similar to some of the lower level languages that we've seen throughout the semester in regards that you can put whatever loop commands that you want within the loop structure and the, the library itself handles um, determining the number of threads and thread pools that it would be available for the loop. Uh, in addition to that, you can um, use the max degree of parallelism option to control that yourself as well. One of my favorite parts about parallel programming C Sharp is probably the large number of data structures that they make available for parallel programming. Um, they have concurrent dictionaries, uh, the, the bag, the queue, the stack, um, and they also have this unique, uh, this unique collection called a blocking collection which can be wrapped around the bag, queue, or stack. And what it does is it would allow two multi-threaded processes um, to share a synchronized data structure. And the blocking collection can tell, you know, uh, one parallel for each loop uh, when, when another one is done producing items and vice versa and manage all the inner process communication uh, that occurs in such multi-threaded processes. So one of the challenges I have with some of the uh, lower level libraries is, um, say, to how to get from what we have on the left-hand side of the screen, which is an example from OpenMP, uh, simply dividing work between two loops. Um, to something like a, you know, giant um, pipeline process that is, uh, has MapReduce spread across three different servers. Um, and I think that's what uh, the building blocks in C-sharp for parallel programming provide a nice alternative to. But since we only have a limited amount of time today, uh, I thought I would take one of those MapReduce blocks and see if we could build a simple you know, producer-consumer pipeline to map reduce, um, say, word frequencies from given chunks of text uh, using many of the new techniques that we've talked about previously in this presentation. Um, so let's look at the mapping result and the, the reduction result um, section of, of the diagram here. And what you can see is I'm showing you in C Sharp how you can use a concurrent bag wrapped in a blocking collection and also a concurrent dictionary to house information in a map reduce pipeline. So first of all, for our MapReduce pipeline, we're going to use a single threaded process to go through a large block of file text, breaking it into smaller chunks which can be processed in parallel. The single threaded process is going to use the yield return command to go ahead and as each block of 250 characters is identified, place that into a thread safe blocking collection where a multi-threaded map mapping process can go through and identify all the words within each block. Looking at the mapping portion of our MapReduce pipeline, what we can see is that the worker threads on the left hand side of the screen are represented by a parallel for each loop. And the for each loop is taking each one of the chunks of 250 characters and going through them and identifying individual words from those and placing those words into a thread safe blocking collection where they can further be reduced into unique words with frequencies. Now simultaneously, we will also have a reduce words process operating um, with a second parallel for each loop against the thread safe blocking collection of words. It will be pulling each individual word out, placing it in a concurrent dictionary, and if the word already exists, it will actually increment that word's frequency by a value of one each time that word is encountered over and over again. This process will continue until all of the text has been mapped into words which are reduced into unique words with their frequencies. So now that we've covered all the functions required for our simple MapReduce program, um, let's put them all together in a, in a single uh, master program. Uh, what you can see going on here is we have a um, asynchronous call to run the mapping portion or, or the map words function in the background while the reduce words program or function is running in the foreground. Um, it's also important to note that the reason we use the blocking collection wrapped around the um, individual words is so that way the map words program can notify the reduce words program when it is done completing or reducing all words. And the re reduce words program also knows on the other side when it should terminate 
knowing that it has processed all of the words and that no more words are going to be produced in the future. Well, that concludes my presentation for today, and I hope you've seen how easy it can be to put together massively parallel pipelines and processes using the C Sharp language. Um, thank you very much for your time, and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me using the information below.